Ethics is important in media and communication because communication is relational. It involves people. It involves talking to people, writing about people, encouraging people to tell you as the media professional their stories. So whatever we do, whether we do it face to face, behind a camera, in front of a screen, wherever, communication involves human relationships. And as a result of that, we as professional communicators are constantly negotiating ideas such as respect, fairness, harm, and autonomy. These are issues or balls, if you like, that we juggle every day as professional communicators. That makes communicating ethically or ethical communication or thinking about ethics a very audience-centered approach to communication. And that's, I think that's really important in terms of our public service obligations so, because to communicate ethically is to communicate with thought and care. It is to think about your audience at all times. Communicating ethically involves placing the priorities of your audience and the priorities of the people you are engaging with above everything else. And I think that is a really important set of principles to, to think about and try to uphold. We often think of media ethics in relation solely to journalism. And, you know, journalists have a bad reputation in terms of ethics. And, you know, quite often that is justified when we look at shows like A Current Affair or newspapers like The Daily Mail, those sorts of things. Um, you know, the, the quite um, low credibility rankings um, for journalists seem justified. Um, but ethics and ethical thinking is, re is required in every branch of the media. It's an important set of considerations in any form of professional communication. And new forms of communication mean the question of ethics is more important than ever. Now, in this unit, we've already addressed issues around privacy and the use of data in apps. How that data gets used is an ethical decision. Something like reality television. We might not think of that necessarily as a new form of media, um, but in comparative terms it is. It's only really been around since the turn of the century. Um, reality television involves a whole different set of ethics around the use of ordinary people in extraordinary situations um, and ideas of informed consent. Do people, do the contestants on reality TV shows really know what they're letting themselves in for when they sign up? They might say that they do, but whether they actually understand the consequences of what it is that they do is a completely different thing. As media professionals, we are aware, or you will become increasingly aware of the, of the kinds of considerations that you need to make um, in terms of how you behave both publicly and privately, on camera, off camera, you know, on social media versus away from social media. But ordinary people, don't necessarily have the training to make those decisions. So whether we set, whether reality television is actually setting you know people up um, for ridicule, for emotional and in sometimes physical harm, is a, you know they are questions that I think are legitimate to to ask. The rise of call out and cancel culture 
involves a set of ethical decisions that sometimes require more thought than a lot of people give them, particularly when we're talking about issues of justice and issues relating to the law. And we're going to have a look at this in a couple of weeks when we when we look at you know, sexual misconduct in media and communication industries and the rise of the Me Too movement. But calling out someone on social media or in a newspaper might be an ethical decision, but that could have legal consequences, not only for the person who makes the allegation, but also for the person being spoken about, the person being accused, particularly if that allegation is, is um, proven not to be correct in a court of law. Um, and we've seen that um, play out in the case of um, Australian actor Geoffrey Rush, um, where the Daily Telegraph, um, he was successful in suing the, the Daily Telegraph for defamation over claims of, mis of sexual misconduct. Um, one of the issues with call out culture, one of the issues with cancel culture is that it sometimes subverts the rule of justice, the rule of law. And that's something we need to be careful about, both in terms of protecting, well, not only, well, in terms of protecting the innocent, both the victim and the alleged perpetrator, if it's found out that, that they were not actually doing what they were accused of. So ethics is important and ethical decision making is important in all branches of the media. And in many ways, an understanding of ethics is what separates media professionals from amateurs. And I think that's a really important point to make. One of the things that you get from coming to university and studying media is an understanding of social responsibility of which ethics is, is part of. And that is what separates media professionals from amateurs, from bloggers, um, from hobbyists, from any, any of those sorts of people. Now, what I mean by this is that even if we have ethical training, even if we develop ethical judgment, we're not always going to get things right. We are going to make mistakes. And one of the downfalls or one of the, one of the hard parts of having a public job, being a public communicator, is that when you mess up, you mess up in public. That's, that's one of the that's one of the downsides of an otherwise, you know, really privileged and really, really wonderful job. But even though we might get it wrong from time to time, if we are equipped with a really strong and robust set of ethical reasoning skills, at least we will be aware of ethical dilemmas. At least we will be able to go through in advance the potential consequences of our actions. And that helps prevent harm for both us and more importantly, our audiences and our sources and the people we, we engage with.